Kaz, you mm -hmm. find yourself with your eyes open, and you're aware of a faint rocking side to side. As you look to the side, you see the Deathlands rolling past the windows of a train. I'm on a train? You're on a train. Hmm. As it rounds a corner, it begins to ascend, and you catch the first sight of a city. The front of the, the main facade of which carved into the rock itself. And the, the track almost coiling around itself as it ascends, as it begins to make its final approach to Cloudspire. Um, Gaz does not show a lot of genuine emotions. Uh, the very snarky, very snide. But there is just the tiniest little pearl of his lips as he sees this new city just open up in front of him. He is enthused, to say the least. As, as the train levels out again and begins to slow, you see passengers around you begin to stand. They gather bags from over, from overhead, uh, overhead shelving. You see just down the carriage a, a a young mother try to hopelessly to try and field two very very kind of. Uh, excited and expectant children who are pushing past other passengers in an effort to get off the train first as it slows down to a crawl and arrives at the station. You see a railjack walk through, spin the large safe type door lock and push this big iron door open onto the platform itself made of a well-maintained and highly polished white marble. As you step down to a new life, your eyes pry open and everything hurts. Mm. I like to think it's it's like the door opens and the light is starting to shine in and yeah. then my eyes open to the blinding light of wherever I'm at. Yeah. You feel that you can you can flex your flex your fingers, clench your hand into a fist, and you feel yourself going through that and looking down. There is nothing responding to those those commands. But you can feel the you can feel every movement you're making. Where am I at? As your vision clears, you're on a very, very hastily thrown together, almost travel cot. And you recognize the, your, as the imperative you are in that basement office. I go to push myself up, get lopsided, uh, manage to finagle my way to have my feet under me. I start looking for anyone else that's here. Uh, but the first person you see is Battered Crow. Crow? <sighs> Oh, good, you're awake. That's one thing off the list of worries. Is it a worry that I wouldn't wake up? 
you kind of see Crow's not actually wearing his normal ratter, ratty duster. He's He's got more a semblance of a field surgeon at this time still. Um, you can tell that he's got what looks to be dried blood on him. He's got what you would assume were at one point sterile gloves. Um, he kind of looks and he goes, well, when somebody loses a limb, you're never quite sure how much blood is lost before things were cauterized. Thankfully, things were pretty instantaneous, but when dealing with electrical shocks, um, it do, it, you, sometimes it doesn't do very hard. Mm. Ah. <sighs> By the way, is was this the intended result, or do you need to adjust those lightning grenades of yours? They are grenades meant to deter spirits, uh, so the voltage is as is intended. Um, the voltage, however, on a normal person uh, is effective. I would say so. <sighs> okay. Crow. How... How am I going to continue working in this outfit if I... I am the muscle, and I only have half the muscle. Well, that was... Uh, Crow at this point kind of shakes his head and sighs. That is a matter of some concern. The blue coats have informed Sasha that there's not enough money in the budget. Uh, I believe the words cut loose were spoken once. However, mm. that is not how I operate, nor is, nor is it how Sasha operates. We are, we have reached out to other outfits to remedy this situation. And on that note, uh, let's start with, we are going to reach out to, uh, let's see what is happening. Ceres. Cerise. It's the We got Gecko, Ghost, and Slate. Uh, Gecko. So, uh, yes. Um, as the last... When last we left you, you just discovered a... an armory of sorts where a single... Um, uh, um, a, a single serviceman of the Imperial Cavalry was going through, oiling the various weaponry, dismantling, you know, several parts of dismantled rifles surrounding him. And two chain, and a few chains of bullets that were over a metal supporting pole, just looped over. And those had started to sway as if provoked by an by an unseen and unfelt breeze in this quiet, windowless room. And that, and with that, the, the young serviceman begins to turn around. Gecko, what would you like to do? <clears throat> um... 
Is there any limitation on what the hunting pet can be? Not, uh, not per se. It's obviously kind of not a so much of a fantasy setting. So uh, dragons are pretty much out and things like that. But <laughs> otherwise, tell me. Can she just have uh, a small leviathan flopping on the floor? No, but uh, in Sorry. one of her pockets, she takes out uh, a snake. Oh. And lets it on the ground towards the the person that is the guarding to distract him and just get get him out of, out of here. Okay. Um. Make me make me that check. Uh, let's have a look. Um, trainer. Rules has uh, written uh, the hunting pet is an expert uh, cohort. Okay, uh, so let's. Double check what it. Um... Sorry to be that guy going. No, don't, don't worry. No, I appreciate the uh, rules results. is written. <laughs> um, actually, wow. Uh, How dare you be that person? Um, are we technically tier zero? No, you. Uh, the race is tier two. Uh, you, okay. Um. Oh. Uh, yeah. Roll that quality. So, um, an expert. Um. That's one, I believe. I assume so. So yeah, if you want to make a check with three. Okay. Uh, a, ch a check with what? Sorry. A three die check. Just th uh, straight three die. Yeah. Straight three die. So it's tier. It's tier, and because it's an expert cohort, and uh, you get plus one to that. Six. Oh, very nice. Yeah, he uh, looks one way as his as you step back slightly. As this, what does the snake look like? Um, it's a what's the name of the thing? Um, have those uh, in my country? Uh, a red viper. Oh. Very cool, yes, is it? Not sure of the name, but it's only that way. <laughs> That's, yeah, I was about to say, as it snakes, the terrible use of adjectives there. <laughs> as it slithers over the floor, tongue licking out, tasting the air. As the serviceman turns, looks towards those bullet chains, stops swaying, as he just catches that thing. <laughs> And leaps to his feet. Um, and starts first thing he does is going from the tuneless whistling he was doing previously. Now stood up on the bench that he was previously sat on. Is there anything you would like to do in this moment, or we can jump to? one of the others and think about what you want to do next. Yeah, it's, let's do that. Okay, cool. Uh, let's go to Slate. Who, if memory served, had gone downstairs. Uh, yep. You'd gone downstairs and it was currently ducking in and out of the shadows in between workbenches, avoiding the... what you seem to be officer, who is... Just conducting a standard patrol. Mm -hmm. I believe I found um, schematics for a hull. You did, yes. Right, so... And in where I am right now, do I see any hull bodies? 
Oh, um, I'll say um, yes. Make that check from a. You can do that check from as a, a. You can make a regular check, or you can do it from a control position, but it will be limited effect. Because sure. at the moment, yep. a, you're in, in the room. Would you like to risk it? But it's. You can you can increase that effect if you like, but it will be a riskier roll. Let's go for the risky. I'm daring, so okay, go for, go for why it. Not. This would be survey. The risky standard, I believe. Um, it is yes. You... Okay. There is one across the room which is supported from under the arms. At the moment, it's missing legs. Um, and it's supported from the ceiling with two big chains that loop under the arms. And it just hangs there, dormant at the moment. As you have to dart across the floor to get a clear line of sight on it. Um, covering the area, and as you duck back into the shadows, you are aware that the officer stops silent as you thought you were. The officer heard something. Turns around, begins making their way back towards where they heard that slight sound. Okay. Let's go ghost upstairs and in the uh, in the the room that you found that had the uh, the prototype armor that had been set up on the on the mannequin and had several dents and knocks from testing, but seemed to be holding up incredibly well. So. Um... I believe I had made my way over there and I was going to take the armor. Um, lifting it, lifting it up, it's lightweight and seems to be made with a series of interlocking ceramic panels and then covered in a single kind of black um, not quite Kevlar, anything of that kind of like that modern, uh, modern kind of constructs, but certainly a, uh, a black gauze material that holds everything together, fairly rigid in shape. Buckles up at the side with, the uh, with almost, uh, lock clips rather than any kind of belting. And like I say, this thing is... Has, has certainly seen better days, but is, seen, from what you can tell, remarkably efficient. So, uh, since it's made of, it seems like it could be folded into something smaller. I'm, I don't think Ghost isn't interested in carrying it further in. So what he's going to do is he's going to fold it up as small as he can get it reasonably and then place it in kind of like a, in sort of a hidden spot, but in a place where it's easily accessible for when I, when I pass back through here on my way out so I can just grab it and go. <laughs> uh, there is a, uh, the easiest spot to grab it from and near the nearest exit, which to most people is one of the doors to a wraith. There's a window. It goes to the roof. It's. It might as well be. There might be as well. Might as well be a big exit sign over it. Um, and there's this slightly darkened corner. Mannequin still stands in the center of the center of the room, down the down line from where the the two rifles have been set. And 
What would you like to do next? Oh, well, making note of that window and everything, I am going to proceed in a little further to see what else there is that might be worth lifting. And as you do so, leaving that room, you step out and you find yourself in a large circling balcony almost uh, internally, sort of a, a mezzanine that looks down and you from below you can just about make out the, the shadows of the workshop floor below where Slate currently is is stalking. Uh, doors surround the the entire level up here. Is there anything you are looking for in particular? Well, I went up to the more... Uh, the map had stated that this was kind of more the... R&D, the more experimental stuff, so to speak. Yes, absolutely. So, I mean... I'm looking for things that I can lift for the wraiths, uh, personal money, but also if there if there are experimental hull things here, why not see if we can't get cutting line, cutting edge technology, you know? Oh, absolutely. Um, go ahead and make me that make me that check. See, see what you find. I'll say this is um, controlled, controlled position. All right. I feel like this is more of a study rather than survey because I'm having to look at. Oh, well, this is a hull arm, but you know this looks kind of standard. I would actually have to be really looking at stuff to understand if it's more cutting edge. Yes, absolutely. So controlled standard. No bonus die. I'll take that five. Okay, as you begin to, to go from door, uh, checking into each each door, were you specifically looking for the whole components? Yes. There is there is one that is absolutely you can cast an eye over things and you see the the scattered various aspects of whole creation um which is uh, uh let's have a look at they've all got specific names crafting there um Where's it gone? Um, I know it's like a soul jars required. There we go. Yeah, you've got the uh, so no um, the soul the soul jar is the um, soul vessel. Yeah. Um, um, there's um, you see there's all the different components: clockwork accentuators, the sensorium, uh, the various casings which have not yet been welded together that create that outer shell um, and the various articulated points of the inner chassis no sign of a soul vessel uh, which is generally associated with the spirit in question so it's tied to an individual rather than mm -hmm. a one-size-fits-all design for hulls in general and no real telltale signs of what the feature of this is. As you step inside, the door closes behind you. Ghost's breath catches a little bit in his throat. He doesn't like the sound that made. He's assuming that that door has now locked behind him. Kind Brief of... check. Yes, it has. Is he completely alone in this room? Oh yeah. Okay. As far as as far as he can tell. All right. So with that, he's not. That is a future ghost concern. 
current ghost concern is is he's sorting out the obviously the arm because the inner chassis seems to be completed so he's looking for he doesn't know which arm's missing which arm he's supposed to steal so he's gonna <laughs> grab both and any sort of metal plating that l looks to be part of said arms I'm assuming that they're not just random metal shapes. They're at least, you know, formed. They just haven't been put on. They're contoured and yeah. Yeah, it's like when you're building that chassis, obviously the, the, the last bits to go on and then they, they're welded in. And, but once those are on, any work inside is, becomes incredibly difficult. So it's always the last thing you do. Yeah. And it's, as you pick up the second arm, the left arm, you think you notice the fingers just twitch ever so slightly looking at it again as you fix on them still as jumping back to gecko you see the uh that serviceman stands up draws simple flintlock from his from his belt and kind of hold, holds it by the barrel so it's got the, the club end you see him begin to stalk down the length of that bench looking for where that snake went he's Casually looking kind of, for for what he's looking Sorry? he's looking for the snake oh he's hold, holding a flint lock but with the the metal ball end a uh, handle so he's got it kind of as a club occasionally you see him crouch down sort of look under under the bench Try and get a line of sight. As it hisses from a corner, he stands up again. What would you like to do? Um, is is he uh, far from me and turning his back? He or... he is uh, at that moment when he hears the hiss again, turns his back. There's a bench near you then a section of space which is littered with various stocks and lever action components of rifles that he that he was previously working on and then there's the bench that he is now he's now crouched on okay so i could technically crawl and grab one of the bullet things isn't, yes we don't get it. i'm going to try that go for it uh, prowl, uh, I'm going to, is a prowl check? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I will say, uh, you set your, uh, I will say you can do that at plus one, because you theoretically set yourself up previously to do this. Five. And... As you duck into the shadows, your you take away the chain, the the chain slides off the slides off the pole very neatly. What are you looking to do with these? Um, hmm. I don't think I have pockets big enough to put them in, so just taking some. It's a, it's a chain, but you can sort of like wear it like around your. Well, right around your body, I'll... like over a shoulder and underneath. I'll do that. And as you do, as you, as you step back, you see that the, the serviceman has looked at you directly, but hasn't crawled, called out, hasn't made any attempt to cry for any kind of attention. And looking down, you see that his feet now hang a couple of inches above the ground as he makes these choking, rasping gasps as his head is held back and something seems to be choking him. You just hear him. <laughs> okay, I'm going to call for boost. <laughs> that's that's not my era, uh, my area of expertise. I'm going to um signal the snakes to come back to me his name is brian call <laughs> brian back to me uh and just 
Well, that's unfortunate. Good luck, buddy. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> and as you step away, there is the as his body falls to the ground eyes rolled back into his head tongue hanging out slightly as you just see the misty form out the corner of your eye disperse once again back into nothing Let's jump back to Slate. What are you going for? Okay, I have a question. Yes. I have a thing called a silent silence potion vial. What does it do? It creates an area of silence within a few feet for a few moments. Okay. So I'm gonna cross over to that hall that's like hung up huh? okay stealthfully for sure i would say um at the moment you're now playing this game of cat and mouse with this officer who is under the mm -hmm. suspicions that something is going on uh so i'm going to say desperate action but go for it Okay. Are you using the silence potion now? No, not yet. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's a wild ride. <laughs> wow. Absolutely, yeah. Um, as Min maxing the, <laughs> best of both worlds. Yeah, as the, okay. Um, uh, yeah. As you duck from shadow to shadow, you see you're aware of that officer who's up against this very, very large shelf, metal shelf, stacked with crates and boxes. You see him draws the pepper box revolver, holds it up, ducks around the corner. No one's there. As you, uh, as you pretty much slide in beside the the hull, which stands a little bit taller, especially where it's suspended, but you are once again in the shadows right beside it. What would you like to do? Hey, so how do I use this vial? Do I need? To, do I just like pour it? Do I need to drink it? Is what's uh, this deal? I would say just uh, you. Um, it's it's one of those things you pour out and it's uh, pretty much in contact there. It becomes gaseous. And in that area, everything just muffles and becomes silent. Yep. Just... So, yeah. As... Life all this. All yep. over there. And with that... Okay. <laughs> now I am going to pull out of my back pocket some tinkering tools. <laughs> and okay. with the hull hung in front of me, I'll be, with the help of the schematics that I got, hopefully try to detach it from the torso. Amazing. The so plus one for tinkering tools, greater effect for the schematics. Let's do this. <laughs> and I'm going to push myself. Okay, so plus two. Imagine having the ability to push yourself. <laughs> A luxury. <laughs> You're not stressed out enough, man. Yeah. Um, is this risky? Just risky? It's risky, greater effect, plus two. 
That's great because I don't have I don't know how to tinker. So I'm putting my back into this. <gasps> ah! Time to reverse. Ah, yeah. Would you like to resist as the eyes of the hull begin to glow with an azure blue? <laughs> oh, absolutely. I would love that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, make me a... Uh, that would be a prowess ship. Oh, true. As the arm... There's a clunk as the arm falls to the ground. And fortunately, does not make a sound as as the head begins it snaps back, and you realise that this is very much an active hull as it begins to almost feel out its new body. You see hands twitch, fingers begin to crack together on the pan that's still remaining. Um, but you do take one stress. Oh. Mm -hmm. As you duck back okay. in the shadows behind it. And with that, let's go back to Ghost. <sighs> Alright. So... I've got what I need, what I want. I've got an armor that I'm pretty sure even in its kind of dented state, I could turn a profit. I think it's probably time to get get the hell out of Dodge. Um, so uh, I guess my question is, is I realize some items are single use. Is the ghost mm -hmm. key single use? Uh, it, I will say it's, um, let's say it's limited effect. This is more if it works, not that it's guaranteed to work. There, there needs to be a ghost door or something in the vicinity for it to, to engage. They're fairly unpredictable. Okay. Uh, bearing in mind your armor is still in the previous room as well. Yeah. I'm more thinking of... Yeah, I can't necessarily control where I'm going to be when I exit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so... I guess the first order of business is... Um, this underneath... I think this would be underneath burglar, uh, my burglar gear here. Yes. I'm gonna go ahead and check that off, and I'm gonna give it the good old-fashioned college try if- to see if I can even pick this. Okay. Uh, we'll do, yeah, this one. Also, desperate action, this is, a uh, Imperial Cavalry. Yeah. Establishment, it's pretty high security stuff. So, this is finesse. I'm okay with finesse. I'm not great with finesse. This is. You said desperate? Yes. Okay. I want to ask can I hear the devil's bargain? <laughs> okay, so bonus to your bonus to your die. Um, however, it will. Um, it will add a piece to two clocks, regardless of of outcome at minimum. Are these clocks already uh, having pieces ticked? I, I... They they are, yeah. Uh, so I'll let you know, one is Discovery. 
Um, Makes sense. That's by the uh, the other one is now the arrival of the spirit points. Okay. Oof. Not gonna tell me how many pieces they have and how many pieces they need. Uh, the wardens is currently at one of four. Uh, Discovery is at four of six. Oof. All right, now I'll try it so with I'll just my two in, die here. Into two and five. Okay. Five. Ooh. Um, and. Um, that is. As the. As the door clicks open, you feel the tumblers give, they snap into place. And something, let me hold on, I just need to check, do you have, um, where is it? Do I have what? Uh, compel. Um, I do not. No. Uh, would you like to make a resistance check or against? Okay, uh, well, we know that Ghost wears his spirit mask, so does the spirit mask affect this at all? Um, I'd say if anything, this is probably the one that actually is going to hinder you because it makes seeing it even easier. <laughs> okay. Well, we all know I can't really... Uh, what resistance would this be? Resolve? Uh, it would be resolve, yes. That's three dice, and I would have to get a six. Otherwise, I'm Need out. Need a six, yeah. Three, one. Yeah, see, that's what would happen. I, I, I know myself. <laughs> I know myself well enough. <laughs> so... What happens? You... That was... Desperate action, wasn't it? It was a desperate, yeah. But a success with complication, so not as bad as a full um, complication. Success with a complication, yes. So it's not, it's not a level three harm. Uh... So, as I tell you what, I will make you a an offer. Um, very bad situation with a level one harm, or a manageable situation with level two. Or, can I make a counter-argument? Okay. Was, it was stated that we have one use of a special armor. Uh, the traditional yes. smoke bomb and then gone. Can... Ghosts be somewhat laced yes. with electroplasm. So basically, in this one case, it would work against a ghost as well. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. Go for it. As I will expend the special armor to just get, get the hell out of here, because that's where I'm going. I'm getting the hell out of here. I'm done. <laughs> would you like to... Are you are you making good your own escape? I am. Yep, I'm. I've got two arms. I've got an armor thing that I want to uh, pawn off on the side. I'm good. So I'm heading straight to that armor and then out that window as fast as I can. As as the dust crackles with the blue, with a slight trace of blue lightning dissipates as the next time we see Ghost is crouched on the awnings of the rooftop above looking down as you see that the 
the window that you just climbed out of just from your kind of slight kind of advantage point advantage point you can just about make it out and you can see that something seems to be hitting up against them as the panes begin to fracture crack you have just finished listening to this week's episode of blades in the dark what happens in the dusk part of the domain gaming written and told by life spark a special thanks to you the listener And if you wish to continue supporting us, subscribe, like, and share. As always, comments are welcome. Until the next chapter. You've heard the silent song. We all have the legend guesses. Some foolishness about a world as it was meant to be. A city of ghosts. An illusion that you can begin again. How much would you give for silence?